Welcome to the YouTube series, How to Build Your Food Truck 2.0 with me, Frank Baltieres. And on today's video, we're gonna be covering a little bit more on the electrical, on how to finish everything up and possibly run a switch with a little light on here. That way you guys can uh, hook up your electricity on your new food truck. And we're gonna be taking these videos again uh, as a video series and then we're gonna be helping you complete your food truck or your food trailer. That way you can get up and going. But on the last video, what we did is we ran the main service cable, uh, which is called the SO cable. And we ran it from the generator inlet cable, which is right here, the box, all the way to your electrical panel. This has no electricity, so don't worry, you're not gonna get zapped. But what I do wanna do, and a lot of comments came in, is can you, hook, can you finish the hookup? So we're gonna finish that up. We're gonna plug it in to the bottom here. This is, just so you know, this is the electrical cable that I use. And if you see on here, it has three prongs because my generator, which is a Westinghouse 4500, uh, has this connected to the front. So when I plug in this to my generator, which is an inverter generator, which are the quiet ones, I like it because it is like super duper quiet. You can take an order from the window and still hear, still have everything powering and I have to hear the generator. The issue here that I've seen in the comments is you guys want to hook up both of these lugs, and we call them legs in the electrical world. We call these two with these legs, electrical legs. You guys say you need the space, and sometimes you do. You're right. However, the issue comes like this. On my generator, you can see it only has three prongs. And if you wanted to run it like this, with both sides, you need four prongs on here. Because with this, one's going to be your neutral, One's gonna be your power. That's how a house runs. That's how you get 120. And this is your ground. It's always gonna be the ground. It's gonna be the one that looks different than the other one. And the ground is more like, a, it's like a safety thing. But this is what gives you 120. If you wanted to have an extra 120, you need another leg. But the issue is, I, don't, I, I, I can't give you expertise on how to make this go to a four prong. Um, because my generator is a three prong. So hopefully that makes sense on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this up right here. Where am my wire strippers at? Give me one second. All right, so if we bring the video right close up, we're gonna see on here that on this generator inlet box, we have something on here that's the X, the Y, the W, and the G. The G is the ground. The W is gonna be the white cable, which we consider to be always the neutral. The X and the Y, are you gonna be your hats. Uh, in this case, because the cable that I just showed you has three prongs, we can only use one of the legs, being either X or being either Y. And what you're gonna do is on the other side of the prong, you see I have four. This side has three. On this side, it's, it's, it's marked the same way as that. X, Y, W, and G. So you're gonna pick one of them, pick either the X or the Y, and you're gonna use the same marking on this side, X or the Y, because you're gonna plug it in inside the generator inlet box. If you wanna have the extra leg, you will have to find a way on how to convert that three prong to a four prong for your generator. But for now, let's connect it. So we're gonna strip this back. This is a 10 gauge wire. So we're gonna take it and strip it back. I'm gonna pick the black. Just want to go just a hair in there. We're going to strip those three back. This other one that's here, we're just going to leave it as extra. So we're going to pick, let's pick Y. Like I said, it's irrelevant which one you pick as long as you pick the same on both sides. So you unscrew it. You stick it in there. Make sure that all the little um, copper flares or whatever you want to call them wires go inside and then we're just gonna tighten it up you don't have to worry about touching metal to metal because you don't have any live electricity right now and you're gonna do the same thing with the w which is the y sorry the w which is the white not the y the y you're gonna connect that you're gonna just stick it in there and then when you tighten this up, it's almost like a, like a compressor. 
and then that tightens it. So you, you always got to give it a yank because you always want to make sure you connect it good. That's always a, uh, a good practice to have. Pull the wire. That way you know you're connected properly. There's a W. There's an X. And that's how you connect these two. That's how you get your 120. And then the ground, you can connect it in there as well. Um, you don't need to. You might need to take this off. Or you can lug it to the bottom and then put it right there so it can be connected with the ground as well. And then this, or you can even connect it right up top right here, which is I think what we're gonna do. This is how you connect your generator inlet box to your panel. There's that. Ah. A little tricky. There it is. You connect both. And then you put this inside the little house. And there you go. That's how you connect the generator inlet box. And what we do next, if you want to connect it in the panel, you come here with your power cable that you ran you pull the access in that way you can make the loops and one thing that i'll give you that you can use if you want to get instead of having a regular breaker that's a 30. here you go you have 15s you have 20s you can use either or but if you want to hook up your 15s these are regular siemens breakers all you do if you see on here, it has a leg, and then it has a way to press it into the to the contact, which is right here. So you kind of just slide it in, and then you press it down. That's it. And then you see you you skip a space because this is the same metal that goes to the third one, and you connect it just like that. And then this is gonna travel down into like either an outlet or a switch. And then this is gonna power up your lights that go right there. So that's how you connect this. Um, and that, that's a different wire that gets run from here to here. That's almost like a Romex wire that you would use right here. So what we're gonna do next, because somebody decided to cut the lawn while I'm filming my video, is we're gonna hook up the neutral right here. And the power so there's your power you guys can see that way you guys can see better so you connect that to the main lug which is right there and then your neutral you're going to connect it right here we call this the neutral bar as such so that's how you do that and then the ground one of the one of one of two you can connect it with the lug right here and you can connect it to the box or you can put another one of these ground bars right here on the side they sell those separately and then you can connect this to this with a solid wire and then you can connect the ground to, to that that way you can be grounded on your box um one option that you can have if you want to have four circuits instead of just two like we have here is you use mini breakers they sell these imagine this just cut in half where each one it's like half the size of that that's why they call them mini breakers where you can hook up two wires that'll run to your outlets and switches and that way you can get four circuits out of two uh, we use those a lot when uh, like for us on the field where we have something called a double tap breaker like in house inspections they have that a lot where some homeowner or somebody decided to connect two wires to the same breaker that run to two different locations that's called a double tap breaker. And an easy solution to fix that is to buy a mini breaker that has two, that has two connections right there, has two screws, and that way you can separate them and they're both individually connected with a breaker by themselves. We call those a mini breaker. 
I'll link it in the description here. But as you can see, that's how you hook up a generator inlet box to your main breaker, wiring it physically. And like I said, if you wanted to use this one, you can. It'll be plugged in right there. The only issue you will have is you'll have to either get your generator to run on four prongs. That way you can have two 120 legs. Or if you have maybe like a coffee truck, a lot of that equipment uses 240. So you would need to have something like that. But that's a bigger generator. Uh, bigger generators mean more money, typically. And typically they're a little bit louder. So that's how you run this. Hopefully that explains it a little bit on how to run the electrical on your food truck for the main power source coming in from your generator inlet box over to your panel. Be careful working around electricity. As you know, right now it doesn't have electricity because it doesn't have a generator hooked up to it. But we can plug it in from an extension cord to like your house or something temporary. Short, they call it shore power. So with that, Frank Baltier is on how to build your food truck 2.0, giving you just a recap on how to connect the inlet box to your main breaker panel. Thanks again. Any questions, drop them in the comments.